Okay, so I've made a YouTube video before about how to use one of these four button LiPo chargers or battery chargers, but I thought I'd start from the beginning, the very, very beginning, in case you had just purchased one of these. Uh, so this is a very common format. Uh, we just call these generically a four button charger because the four buttons. This one's made by Turnigy. Uh, there's a common one made by uh, Sky RC called the IMAX B6. And that one has a lot of generic versions of it, which may not have had as much quality control. And so that's why I selected the Turnigy. I also have something similar uh, made by a company called T Energy. And so those get knocked off too, but just less often. So just more chances that these are genuine models. But regardless, we're gonna go over basically why you would even have one of these units. So when you're charging batteries, whether it looks like this or something else, you normally come, it normally comes with a USB plug and you just plug it into the wall and it takes forever to charge. So the reason it takes forever is because the amperage, the amount of current going into the battery is very, very low. And that's for safety purposes so that <clears throat> for people who are new, they're just plugging it into the wall and they may forget to watch it and, uh, and they may just end up leaving it there. But if you do want to charge a little bit quicker, this unit will allow you to do that. It can maximize the quickest amperage so that you can charge each of your batteries uh, within the hour if it's completely empty. Uh, normally you don't want to keep them, you never want to discharge them completely empty. You do want to store these at 50% so that when you do charge, um, it will take about half an hour only. And that's just for the safety and health of the battery. So first of all, let's kind of go over some of the connector types. The more common one is going to be a Dean's or a T connector, which is this one. And we call that T connector just because it looks like a letter T. And then this is an old style Tamiya connector. Uh, this one, I'm not sure what that is. It's not as common. This one is also very common for budget RC cars. And this is called a JST connector. JST is actually a manufacturer and not actually the type of connector. But generically, people call this red one the JST. There's another one called, also made by that company, and this is called the JST SM. This is also very common with budget RC vehicles. Another one you'll see most common with a lot of uh, people who are really into the hobby is this XT60. So XT60 is very common with 3S LiPos and higher. And there's also a smaller version, which is called XT30. So when you are buying these connectors or adapters or batteries online, just make sure that when you're looking at this connector, if you're looking for that, that it is the XT60 and not the 30 or the other way around. Because sometimes online, you'll see an image and you won't really notice. It just kind of looks similar and you're like, oh, and then you get it and then it's too small or too big. So just make sure you're aware of that. Uh, one thing about this charger is that there's no on button. So basically this cable here, it plugs into that outdoor power receptacle and that's how it turns on. And that's common with all these four button chargers. So what right here, what I have is a LiPo battery tester. So I have a separate video on exactly how to use this, but basically you're gonna connect your balance lead which is this white guy, to the left side of here, and it's gonna tell you how many volts per cell. So in this case, it has a 3.84 and 3.84 for the second cell. So going over the batteries, so this is a LiPo battery versus a lithium ion battery. So lithium ion battery looks like it has two double A's in there. It's circular in form whereas the LiPos are typically flat or more squarish. But if you're gonna have a single cell battery, it's only going to have one lead, generally a white one. If you have a two cell battery, you'll see it's made up of one pack and two packs, so two cells. You'll have a power lead and then you'll have a balance lead. So these power leads are the ones that come in various different styles that we went over earlier. Again, the JST will be the most common along with um, the Deans and the JST SM for those budget vehicles that you probably have. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, just charge this one. So this one, you, it's very important that you look at the specs. So this one is 3.4 volts, or sorry, 7.4 volts. So each cell in a lithium, ion, lithium polymer battery has 3.7 volts. So when we see 7.4, we know there's two cells. 3.7 plus 3.7 is 7.4. Another way to tell that you have two uh, cells in here is by looking at the balance lead. When you see this balance lead and you see three 
of these connectors, uh, you know that it's one minus that is how many cells. So if you see three here, you know that there's two cells in here. So we're gonna go ahead and charge this guy up and we're gonna use this adapter. So you'll notice that this is an XT, sorry, not an XT, an EC2, and this one's slightly bigger, it's an EC3. So in order to do that, we're gonna use an adapter that I purchased online separately. And basically, it just plugs in together like this. And that'll allow you to connect it. So a lot of these connectors, actually all the connectors, will have some sort of safety protocol in their design so that you're not plugging in backwards. In this case with the EC3 or EC2, you're gonna see it's kind of squarish on the bottom and then it's round on top and this one is completely round. That way you can't put it in backwards. But you always wanna kinda of wanna double check the red wire here should always match the red wire here and where they're, and that's true for any type of battery. So in this case, oh by the way, it's very important you wanna be plugging in the banana plugs first. That's very important that you do that first and then you're gonna plug the battery in. The reason why you don't wanna plug this in first before this, and this happened to me and I learned the hard way, is that if you plug this in first without plugging in the banana plugs and then the metal connector on this touches the metal connector in this, what happens is the juice flows through here and it'll, it'll short when they're touching. So that just, by plugging these in first, it just prevents you from um, accidentally having them touch. So plug these in first, plug in the power lead, which is typically the colored one, and then you're gonna do the balance lead second. So in this case, with this LiPo charger, it has a built-in balance board. Sometimes for like the T-Energy ones, you'll see one white board here, or a connector, and then it'll come with uh, a wire and then a board, and then you'll have a bunch of places where you can plug this in. But in this case, I like this Turnergy one because it's already built in here and you don't have separate pieces. But in this case, you're gonna have the metal side facing down like this. So this is going to be for two cell, three cell, four cell, five cell, and six cell. So since this is only two cell, we're gonna go and fit it in here. So we're gonna plug that in. So again, you're gonna plug in the banana leads first, then the power lead, then the balance lead. So we looked at this earlier, and this is a 850 milliamp hour battery, 850 milliamp hour. So first we're gonna decide what you wanna do. So we can balance charge, we can charge, we can fast charge, storage, or discharge. In this case, we're gonna practice charging. So generally, you would use a balanced charge. The only reason you would use a regular charge is if you were charging a single cell battery that doesn't require balancing, because there's only one cell. And so we're gonna do balanced charge. So what happens is, when you're using the battery, one cell may discharge or charge faster than the other, and so over time, they're unequal. And so when you fully charge it using the charge setting, then it'll basically tell you it's fully charged when one cell is charged and not necessarily the other. So that's the reason why we wanna be using the balance charge as often as we can. So here we have the balance charge, and we're gonna click Enter. And then you're gonna see the current, or the amperage uh, blink. And this asks you how fast do you want to charge this battery, or how many amps do you want to run through it. So for safety reasons, we're going to do what's called 1C, and that means we're charging every 1,000 milliamps uh, to one amp. So in this case, we have 850 milliamps, which is less than 1,000. So in that case, we are going to do 0.8. If this had 0.85, we would do 0.85, but this is 0.8. So just kind of as a little pop quiz, this battery here is 1300 milliamp hours. So in that case, we would make this 1.3 amps. This battery here is 500 milliamp hours. And so here we would set this to 0.5. And lastly, for this battery is 1200 milliamp hours. And if we were charging this battery, we would make this 1.2. So since this is 850, we're gonna round down to 0.8 amps. We're gonna click enter here, and it's gonna ask you how many 
cells. So in this case, it's a two cell battery, which we refer to as 2S. So if you're new to this, you would think it would be 2C, C for cell, but S is actually series. So that's how the two cells are connected by series as opposed to parallel. So that's why we call those 2S batteries. So once you have, once you've told the, the unit that you're charging a LiPo battery, that you're balance charging at 0.8 amps, and it's a two cell battery, you click enter, and it's all set. Then you press it again, you hold it down, and it'll double check everything, and then you press enter to start. And here you're gonna see the amount of time that has passed by, and this here you're gonna see how many milliamps milliamp hours are added to the battery. So if you press uh, this button here, you're going to see this screen, which at first may not be that easy to understand, but basically there's six numbers here. Okay, so 3.88, 3.87, oops, and then there's 0, 0, 0, 0. So the reason why these numbers are occupied is because these are the first two cells. So the first cell in this battery is at 3.88 volts, the second cell in this battery is also 3.88. And since it's only two cells and not three cells, then there's no number here. If we had a six cell battery, then all these numbers would be occupied with whatever voltage they are. So in this case, uh, this will be ch so charging to 4.2 amps, sorry, 4.2 volts per cell. So I know that's kind of confusing because we mentioned earlier that it's 3.7 volts per cell, but that's what we call a nominal voltage. When you charge a 3.7 volt battery fully, it actually charges to 4.2. So don't be alarmed by that. When I first started using this and went to 4.2, I realized that overcharging a battery can be really dangerous and that kind of scared me. But that was before I realized that the 3.7 is nominal and all 3.7 batteries, voltage batteries, will charge to 4.2. So in this case, since it's a two cell battery and the actual voltage is 4.2 per cell, it'll finish charging at 8.4. So here we see the time's gone by. I've been talking for a minute and 53 seconds. And then uh, 25 milliamp hours has been added to the battery. And the total voltage of this two cell battery is 7.78 volts. If we click this button, again, you'll see each cell and how many volts in each. So now we're going to go ahead and um, exit out of here by pressing stop. And then we're going to practice uh, storage charging because I actually do want to storage charge this battery. So again, it's a LiPo and we're balance charging. Fast charge storage mode. So now you click start. And then we're gonna go ahead again and storage charge this at a rate of 0.8 amps. This particular device does not allow us to exceed 1.0 in oh it does in storage charge. So the T energy the T energy one as opposed to this turnergy one, uh, the T energy one caps it off at 1.0 amps in storage mode. But uh, with this turnergy one, it looks like you can storage charge it at whatever rate you want. But in this case, again, it's still a 850 milliamp hour battery, which would be 0.8 amps for uh, the current to storage charge it. And it's still a 2S, so we're gonna go ahead and enter, enter, hold down that button, and it says confirm to enter. And so now it's discharging. So you're gonna see this is a lithium polymer battery, lithium, yeah, lithium polymer battery, a 2S, and it is currently at 7.7 .7 volts for the entire thing. And it's in storage mode, or it will be in storage mode, it's set for storage mode. It's been 23 seconds, and it's uh, discharged this by four, or now five milliamp hours. So even though we typed in 0.8 amps, right now it's kind of toggling between 0.6 and 0.7, so it does lower it as needed. So don't be alarmed by that number. Uh, again, we, if we click this status button to the right, we can see that before it was 3.88 and now it's 3.44. So storage charge is going to be 3.8 volts per cell. 
So when this goes to 3.8 and 3.8, this thing will stop. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that here. And while we do that, we're gonna go ahead and talk about some of these batteries. So whatever RC car or boat or vehicle you have, if the connector fits and you have the same cell count, in this case it's 7.4 volts, and we know there's 3.7 volts per cell, that this is a two cell battery. And it's kind of obvious here because you can see two individual cells here. So as long as the cell count is equal and the connector is the same, it will work in your vehicle. The only thing you have to double check uh, is the physical fitment of the battery that it fits in the tray of your, of your vehicle. If you want your vehicle to last longer then you're, and you want to buy a new battery, then you just need to check that it's the same connector and that it's, again, very important, it's the same voltage but you can increase the milliamp hours. So this came, I believe, with a RC boat and 1200 milliamp hours. So I have another one that is 1500 milliamp hours. So that works in the boat as well, and it will just last a little bit longer uh, because it has higher milliamp hours. But you do wanna be consistent with the voltage and obviously the connector. And that is it. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All right, take care, until next time.